Welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be a part two series of my soft close hinges. If you look at one of my old videos, I'll put a link in the description, but I added the soft close hinges on my upper cabinets, as you can see right here. And these turned out to be a really good modification. Now doing the physical installation, if you check out the uh, last video, it looks easier than said than done. Now, when you fine tune cabinets, it's uh, it could be tedious work. So if you're not used to that, this modification may not be for you. But I added a soft close hinge on one side. And what that creates sometimes is the doors are really hard to line up when you remove a hinge. So if you want the easy mod, the easiest thing to do is really add a new soft close hinge right in the center. And that's what I did over on this side because I needed some more spring force. But this big cabinet door, all I did was add a new soft close hinge in the center and left the factory hinges alone. So that would be the easiest thing to do. So continuing on with that theme, the latest that I've done is the lower cabinets. If you look at the lower cabinets, I've installed the soft close hinges here as well. Those doors and then these pantry doors here, I added the soft close as well as the bathroom door. Now I'm going to go over some problems or uh, challenges that I, I ran into. On the bathroom door, for whatever reason, it won't close all the way by itself. You, you know, if you latch it, it will be fine. But I don't know what happened when I installed the last screw. Whatever happened, I don't know if I bent the wood, but ultimately the door won't close by itself all the way. Hopefully that doesn't happen to you, but let's go over these uh, hinges here. I'll go into a very detailed uh, description or video of how I installed this hinge. It's only one hinge. I replaced all the screws, um, applied some adhesive at the same time. And I'll show you the detail of how I put this in. So I had a problem putting in the bathroom door as well as the most challenging was actually these two doors because Winnebago had them crooked from the beginning. So I was trying to fix that as well as making sure the doors don't rub, up, rub on each other when they close. And that fine tuning took some quite a bit of effort. I bet you I worked on these two doors for over an hour. And that was just to get it lined up perfectly. It's much better than how it was from the uh, factory wise, but it was more than I bargained for. So if you're not used to adjusting cabinets, this modification may not be for you. The other thing too is there are probably better hinges out there for this uh, application. I chose these ones for no particular reason. So you may uh, want to do your own sourcing on how to apply or install soft close hinges on your cabinet. And before I jump in any further, some of the changes that I made also is that I removed those little felt bumper pads that are normally on here and I applied the felt basically on this entire piece on the top and the bottom on every single cabinet. That way I don't have to deal with those uh, vibrations and rattles. And this is the, it's a little thicker felt and the uh, color is close to the brown. It's not an exact match, but even on these upper cabinets, I put them right on here. And hopefully that will help out with any kind of squeaking or uh, rubbing a noise from the upper cabinets. But I literally put them on every single door, Include if you look at it. Some I've applied against this part of the cabinet, and some like here, I've actually applied it right on the door itself. I'll put some uh, product links for that, but it really helps down on, you know, here if you can, the rattling. So it cuts down on the rattling. I don't know if it's uh, worth it or not, but I don't know, those rattles kind of get to me after a while. All right, stick around and I'll show you how I install these soft close hinges. Okay, I've decided I'm going to show these cabinets here as well. And if you look from the beginning, it's going to be hard to pick up on camera, but these doors are not aligned very well. They're good enough, but not lined up the uh, best. And all I'm trying to do is get that soft close feature in. So let's start with this bottom hinge here. And hopefully 
this one will be easier. So let's get these out right now. These are screws are really loose. Okay, hopefully the uh, new install will be much easier and faster. So I'm only putting in a couple of the screws for right now. Just to get the uh, doors lined up. So we're just doing the two screws that have the slots. So we, we can adjust them up and down if necessary. And it looks like we already need to adjust them down a little bit. There we go. This is going to be a little boring to watch, but... Okay, now we will line up the doors. And same thing, we're gonna only put it on the one with a slot. And I can see right away that we're gonna run into a little bit of an issue. I'm gonna use the bottom door as a guide. But if you look at the gap between the top and the bottom, that's what we need to adjust. And then they're, they're not, uh, they're usually not evenly spaced. And this bottom one, it's hard to pick up on camera, but the gap on the top hinge is wider than the gap on the bottom hinge. So we use, we will use that as a basis. So with that said, Already, I think what uh, I see what's happening is that either though these hinges look identical, I think the hole spacing on these are a little bit uh, different. It seems like the, this flange here is a little bit wider, so the holes don't line up all the way. So I need the doors to go out a little bit more, but I think, well, let's see what happens here. I'm just gonna do a blind guess here, but I think that first screw that was originally on there cannot be used. I need to use the actual second screw hole. I'll fast forward this portion. Okay, and I'll do the uh, bottom hole here. And I'm going to loosen it. So you see how I'm sliding the uh, door out. I should have probably took a mental image of how big that gap needed to be, but we're just gonna go by trial and error, okay? Now we're going to uh, shut this door and see how one soft close function works. But I already see the door is it's rubbing on the top. It's rubbing on this piece, which it kind of was at one time. It was rubbing, so I need to drop it, which means I need to push. If you look at this, I need to push the door that way. So when you open this, that means I need to push the door or adjust the door this way. So I'll loosen up the screws and I'll adjust them this way. And this is a very tedious work. So if you're not up for uh, tedious work, I would not tackle this. Oops, too much. And the holes are likely to strip on you, so you do have to be careful. So that's my second attempt. And still too much. Looks like uh, I have quite a bit of adjustment I need to make. So one more shot at it. 
looks like these uh, doors were way off adjustment. So what it looks like to me is it almost needs to go in all the way. And let's try this. This is my third attempt. Hopefully it's the final. Well, not quite. It's almost there, but it slightly rubs so the door does not kind of closes all the way, but it rubs just a little bit. So I'll need to make a final, final adjustment. So fourth time is a charm. So what we're running into, the issue I'm running into is the screw holes don't line up anymore. For it to go in, I'm basically bottoming out on the adjustment. So we will have to make possibly new holes, which don't like doing but okay it that actually moved a little bit so it was really the bottom holes don't line up I think the top one did so here's my uh, challenge now the top one let me adjust it a little bit but I have no holes on the bottom so I either need to create a new hole or try to work this with just one screw which you have to be careful because this is how it strips with only one screw and we'll see if that is enough adjustment. Looks like that pretty much gets us back to the factory setting on how it was. So I think I'm gonna leave it that way. One more uh, test. Hopefully that screw does not strip out on me. I'm going to make one little adjustment here, not an adjustment, just tightening it so it doesn't move on me. And I'm going to try it one more time and let's, okay, the soft close functions. It doesn't go in all the way because it kind of rubs here, but that's how it always was. So I'm not going to uh, fix that. I'm going to leave that because it will wear after time and instead of turning a big job into a small job I will finish these screws so what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply that caulking so I will fast forward this portion here so I have some caulking on here and we will hand tighten these And you have to be careful so you don't end up stripping the new screws. I have a little longer screw here because this piece of wood can handle a longer screw. So I'm going to go ahead and put this longer one in. And I could probably use my power drill for this. Yeah, I'll finish off and uh, hand tighten these. Remove the excess caulking here. Okay, then the other screws I already had in here, originally had in here, I'll take these out and apply caulking on here. You know, if there's a better caulking that uh, anyone knows that they would recommend, because uh, I don't, like I said, I don't know how well it works. All I'm trying to do is prevent them from backing out with the vibrations. Okay, that's good for cleanup for now. Let's finish this last hole on the bottom.
Okay, I need to put uh, two more screws, but these will be new holes that I need to put here because the other two holes don't line up. So what I will do is I will actually start the hole with the drill. Okay. And then take it back out. And I'll apply the caulking on here. Yeah, I would definitely highly encourage putting in new thicker screws because the one Winnebago uses, I think they're just way too small and the uh, threads are not coarse enough. This wood is so soft here. Okay, actually the bottom needs two more new screws. So let's go ahead and do these because none of the holes line up on the bottom. Okay. Again, I'll take it back out. I should have probably taken it back out with the regular drill. I don't know what I was thinking. But we will apply caulking again. Okay, one more hole. Okay, I've applied caulking on this screw. And then this original screw I need to do, I need to apply caulking on this original screw that I never... <laughs> okay, when I uh, edit this out, I'm only going to edit a very small portion, probably 30 seconds worth of uh, stuff to edit out or cut out that's boring but you can see in real time how long it took to do one door now this is what said this is usually tougher than you think on adjusting doors let's see if this there we go like i said it rubs a tiny bit right there i don't know if the camera picks that up but it always has and it eventually it settles in so this is pretty much how I had it from the factory and I'm going to leave it like that instead of messing with it uh, too much. And we'll do the uh, bottom door next, but what do you think? That's in uh, real time on how long it will take, but I don't want to make it sound too simple. You know, this stuff uh, takes practice and adjusting and you saw that I had to adjust it four times. And if I really wanted to, I could have probably adjusted it one more time to get it lined up just a little bit better than what the factory had. But I'm going to settle at this. I'm going to continue on with the others and I'll give you a final snapshot of uh, what I have.